This is Jimmy Licalco live broadcasting from Makati. And uh, this is our fourth or fifth broadcast on uh, different topics about uh, beyond science and religion, any topic on the sun. Uh, today, we don't have a specific topic. What I'm going to do is to answer so many questions that were not answered before, and also those new ones that came in uh, afterwards. Walang katapos-tapos talaga yung mga tanong dito, no? Well, there's one interesting uh, question that I received, uh, which is, can an unborn child remember what happens in the womb? And here is a letter from a Miss Catherine P. Uh, I will not mention the last name. And she said, dear Mr. Kapp, was it possible for my three-year-old daughter to remember what happened when she was still in the womb. She told me she dreamt she was floating inside my tummy, that I was cooking eggs and vegetables, and that she also ate them. This is true, because I mostly cooked eggs and vegetables during my pregnancy, said Catherine. Also, her daughter mentioned that she felt hot or burned once inside her tummy. And there was this incident when I accidentally burned my tummy with hot water when I was pregnant. She also mentioned that she dreamt how she came out from me. Is this normal <laughs> for her age? Or does she have any psychic ability? My reply is, this is not a common occurrence, but it does happen. May mga pangyayaring ganyan. For example, I read a story once a long time ago about a three-year-old girl, an American baby, who was heard by her parents humming and not so well-known French folk song. Now, nobody in the household speaks French, nor they, do they know how to sing any French song. When the mother asked the child, where did she learn that song? The child answered, I just know it. Nobody taught me how to do this or how to, nobody taught me how to sing this or hum it. So they were puzzled until somebody remembered that when this girl was still in the womb, maybe three or four years before, um, there was a French nanny who used to sing this song while she was still in the womb. How can she remember afterwards? So what does the story tell us? It's important that um, parents should be careful what they say to a pregnant, uh, in front of a pregnant woman, because the child can remember, can hear these things. There was a, a story, or no, it's not as a story, but uh, there is a case of a woman who was, uh, very shy and she felt that nobody wanted her and she had difficulty relating to people or making friends. It was later revealed during a direction session that when she was born, her parents expressed disappointment because they wanted the first child to be a boy. They, they expressed, oh, wait a minute, girl. time out, time out. Uh, hello. So, fake, time out, look. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I need some assistance here. <laughs> Sorry about that, no? 
Okay, where am I? It's always important now that um, people uh, should not say anything negative to a uh, woman who is pregnant <clears throat> because it's possible for the baby, the fetus, to to hear what everything is being said. And also, even after, especially after she was born, like what happened in this case, this woman or this baby grew up to be lacking in self-confidence, thinking that she doesn't, she's not wanted because she heard that when she was born, the parents were disappointed because they wanted a male child, the firstborn. So you see the effect of this. So there is such a thing as um, prenatal, meaning before birth, prenatal programming. You can actually educate uh, children even in the womb. Can you imagine that? Of course, it sounds quite unbelievable. But there have been cases where, for example, if you want your child to like classical music, that the, the mother should listen to classical music and maybe talk to her about this kind of music. Or there was a, a mother who wanted her child to be good in mathematics. So what she would do, she would memorize the multiplication table and do algebraic equations while she was pregnant. When the child was born, she was very good in mathematics. Coincidence? Not necessarily. It's possible to educate a child even when she is or he is in the womb of the mother. So that's it. Uh, there are many things that we do not understand, but which happen. So that's my uh, answer to Miss Catherine. Okay, going. Proceeding to so many other questions. Uh, well, here is an interesting question. This one came, did not come from the broadcast we have. It came from a long time ago, so many years ago in my radio program. But I think it's good for me to repeat this uh, question. There's somebody uh, who asked uh, about me and said that uh, she has not, he has not tried reading any of my books. But from the interviews, columns, and radio program, he has questions, you see? And he's using a fake name, so I won't even mention his name. It's useless. And I hope it will not deter you from reading this. I don't want you to know my name. I want to remain unknown. Okay, Mr. Unknown. First, from your columns, interviews, and radio, Jigs, I think you're not a Catholic. Am I right? <laughs> no judgment here, but I feel my views about God will definitely be within the lens of a person reading Catholicism. I don't know how to answer that question because I I was born a Catholic. I was really a Catholic. I was educated in a Catholic school from elementary, high school, and college. I think I even taught religion one time. In, in, in college, and I was a catechist when I was in high school, so <laughs> I know Catholic catechism quite well. I have three versions of the Bible, King James Version, the Revised uh, International Version, and even the Jerusalem Bible. And when the Nag Hammadi, uh, Nag Hammadi text, Gnostic Gospels were found in Nag Hammadi, Upper Egypt, in 1947, that it was published, it was a book in English, I read many of the Gospels, so the Gnostics, you know, the Gnostic Gospels, so different. I have many questions regarding the Catholic Church. Now I feel that all religions are good. I have not renounced any religion. I think they are all basically the same. Teaching one thing, do good and avoid evil. All religions say that. So it doesn't matter to me whether you're a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim or a Zoroastrian, <laughs> to me, they're all good. <laughs> and I'm not interested in converting people to my way of thinking. I only share my views to those who are interested. You may reject 
or accept this depending on your point of view and it's perfectly fine with me we will go into quarrel if i'm trying to convert you to my way of thinking but since i am not interested in converting people then it doesn't matter to me whether you believe me or not you are free to accept or reject it and most religions uh, almost wars revolutions uh, have been fought since the beginning of time because of religion there is no need to quarrel about this each one to his own belief and should be respected by everybody if you have no question about your religion if you believe that is the right religion then go ahead and stay with that religion isn't it there is no point in trying to convert from one religion to another because religion puts a person's mind in a box and converting from one religion to another is just like jumping from one box to another you're still in the box <laughs> so uh, to me it doesn't really matter what religion you have i respect all religions what is my belief then that's my belief hmm? then are you amazing no i'm not amazing although i have read the books of masonry and their beliefs i know the history the quarrel between the conflict between christianity and, uh, and the masonry but that's their quarrel not mine what have you been really searching sir haven't you found it yet you know that's a very interesting question what am i searching for i'm searching for the truth in everything I'm fascinated by the unknown, by things that are happening, but which are ignored by science. For example, how can people tell the future when it has not yet happened? How can some people remember their past lives? How come there are such things as ghosts? Are there really such things? How come some people can, can see the past? How come some people can read minds? How come some people can walk on fire without being burned? Now, what about psychic surgery? Is this true or not? I'm fascinated by those that cannot be explained by science. And that has been my passion since then, is to, to find out for myself, by the way. I am interested in this because I have questions for myself, and I want to convince myself whether this is true or not, and not others. Uh, for some who may benefit from my research, that's fine. But I am primarily interested in converting myself to my own convincing myself whether it's true or not. Many of the critics of this, uh, what's called so-called paranormal phenomena, many of these critics, the psychic powers and all that, many of these critics have not really done the research. They've uh, talked about it, if it's all wrong, it's fraudulent. But if you ask them, what's your basis for saying so? Do you have any proof? And most of the time, I find that they cannot they cannot present any proof of their stand. Psychic like surgery is one good example. We have so many critics of this, but they, they, they have not really come up with any, any proof that's completely fraudulent. Whereas I have proof of their genuineness and many other scientists that have researched on this, and I have met them personally. But uh, not all may be true. Maybe some of them are fraudulent. I don't know. I can only watch for those where I have scientific or medical proof. And I have at least four or five in my case. But there are others who can present also evidence of the validity of psychic surgery, although it's almost impossible when you come to think about it, because how can you open the body with your bare hands? With your bare hands, you cannot, see? Anyway, let's proceed with other questions. What have you been searching for? I said, I'm searching for the truth and things that are happening. Have you not found it yet? I found many of them, but there are still many questions that I haven't answered for myself, which I'm still trying to do, to find out, or to convince myself about. And this is the afterlife. But I'm, I'm there. I have done a lot of research on what happens really in the afterlife, which I find to be quite different from what our religion tells us. <laughs> All right, um, what else? 
Okay, so I think that this guy has a lot of questions and these are the most important ones. No? Because he's talking about his Catholicism, his belief, that's fine with me. No problem with that. <laughs> okay, let us proceed. Where is this one? Oh, there is from Jen Bernales. I hope you'll do seminars via Zoom, sir. Well, yes, in fact, we did uh, twice already um, seminar on self-healing through visualization and meditation and very successful. We need only about 10, at least 10 to confirm their participation is 2,000 per student. And um, we can go ahead and proceed. We have one scheduled. We're planning to have another Zoom seminar on January 11. January 11, maybe about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, those who are interested to join the self-healing through visualization seminar, which is very effective, by the way, you may call the following numbers. Um, 0998-988-6292. Let me repeat that. 0998-988-6292. Or 8810-7245. 8810-7245. One zero seven two four five. Oh, yan pala. <laughs> or email me, Jaime Dilecaco at Yahoo.com. Okay, from, from Vic. From Vic, Vic. What does it mean if I keep on dreaming about their loved ones? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Why? Dreams cannot be interpreted except in the context of the dreamer's life and present concerns or at the time the dream happened. If the dream you're telling me happened 10 years ago, I want to know what's happening to you 10 years ago because your life may have changed today and may not apply anymore. So if I try to interpret it now, it, I may be wrong. For me to interpret the dream, I have to know a lot about you. I have to ask a lot of questions about your life, your concerns, your likes and dislikes, your age, your profession. Then I can interpret the dream. And even you. You see, the best interpreter for a dream is the dreamer himself or herself. Because dreams are the language of the subconscious mind. And since it is you, since it is you who dreamt it, I must interpret it from your point of view, not from my point of view. To do that, I have to know you first to know your concerns, then we can see a pattern. Then that's the time you can interpret a dream. But without knowing this, so how old are you? A dream of a five-year-old or a seven-year-old kid is different from a 70-year-old, no, the dream. So you have to know the background of the person dreaming. A lot of people ask me to interpret their dreams, but I can't do it. I don't know how to do that without asking so many questions. In fact, I'm writing a pamphlet on dreams, and uh, part of it will be how to interpret dreams. All right. Uh, send in your questions. If you're, you're, because now most of the time, question I forget at home, no? What do I? What does it mean if I dare, if I if I dream of dead loved ones? Well. There are many interpretations of this, depending on what their concerns are. You know? And then, uh, is astral projection safe? We discussed this in previous program about astral projection. And there's a question from Rod, uh, Rod um, Amba. Yeah, Amba. And who is asking, is astral projection safe? Generally, yes. You know, astral projection or out-of-body experience is a natural phenomenon. It happens to almost everybody, but they're not aware of it. When we are asleep, our astral body leaves the physical body to rest or learn something in the, 
spiritual world. And that's uh, natural. It is when we wake up during that astral projection and we see our body, physical body, asleep, that's when it becomes problematical because you get afraid. You think that you're dead. Actually, you're not. You're out of the body and you see your physical body sleeping there. And you try to move, you cannot move. So doctors call this sleep paralysis, but it's different. Sleep paralysis is a disease. It's not the same as astral projection. Astral projection is a natural phenomenon and generally safe. As long as you don't struggle, when you wake up in the astral field, as long as you don't struggle, you don't panic, and you just keep quiet, you will naturally go back to your physical body. But if you panic, if you struggle, then there will be a problem. It will have, you will have difficulty getting back. Why? Because then there will be a desynchronization between the vibrations or frequencies of your astral body and the frequencies or vibration of your physical body. So if you don't panic, you keep quiet, you will slide back to your body if you look, if you think of your body. So that's it. Another question is from Jim Ench. I don't know whether these are real names, <clears throat> excuse me, or uh, made up names. Maybe these are not real, but it doesn't does matter. He says, I buy secondhand items and I use them. I also cleanse it with sage. Is that enough? Do you think I should not? I should not buy or use secondhand shoes and bags. <coughs> Sorry. I didn't say that. I didn't say you should not use these things, the secondhand items. If you know the background of the item that you're buying, the background, shoes or bags or whatever, car, then it's okay. Antiques, for example. They are not all bad, and I, I, I want I want to emphasize this because people get the impression that I'm against all antiques. That's not true. If you know the background of the antiques, and if there has been no ritual, and it was not involved in any murder or crime, then then it's fine. You can use them. It's those things that you don't have a knowledge of the background that you should be careful. But aside from that, no. It, it's okay to, to have antiques and to use this. A question from Adrian Bianca Villanueva. How do you access the Akashic record? Tough question. It's a tough question. You know, the Akashic record does not exist on the physical plane. It is a memory of everything that has happened to a place or to a person. Everything he has thought of, desired, intended, or done, recorded in the Akasha. It is the memory or remembrance of things past, present, and future. To access it, you have to have a higher um, understanding of the higher, higher truths, higher spirituality, sensitivity, to be able to do that. Okay. It takes time, time, it takes time. I know only very few people who can do this, who can access the Akashic Record. One of them is Edgar Casey, who in a trance can access the Akashic Record and the subconscious of the individual. And that's why he can, he knows a lot of things because the Akashic Records are a record of everything else in the world, past, present, and future. Maybe Olaf Johnson, the Swedish psychic, was hired by President Marcus to find the amass of the treasure. I met him personally in the Philippines. And uh, although Johnson can read the Akashic record. Aside from this, there may be a few more, but there are very few who can read the Akashic record. But you know, in my class in ASP, I have, a, I have this exercise called psychometry, where you hold an object belonging to a person who do not know, and you read that person through the object, because there's the Akashic record of that object, belonging to a person, and you can read that person. You're really actually reading the Akashic record of that particular object. So that's one exercise you can do. 
to be able to access no, the, the Akashic record. And it's fun. All right, Miss from Emerson Co. Is there such a thing as an alternate timeline? This is a question that physicists have been debating and trying to answer. Not only that, is there is there such thing as time travel? Other are there other dimensions of reality or other dimensions or planes of existence? Are there many worlds or parallel universes? These are hot items in the in the field of quantum physics. And there are some criticists who say that yes, time travel is possible. Also, they say yes, there's such thing as parallel universe or other dimensions. And I believe them that it is correct because in esoteric literature, the science, the esoteric or occult sciences, it is known that there are several dimensions in the spiritual field. According to one school of thought, there are seven dimensions or levels of existence, and each dimension has seven subplanes. So this is, this is how many dimensions. Quantum physicists are saying now that there are 11 dimensions based on their calculations, based on their theories, etc. There are advocates of parallel universes and multidimensional reality. The things that do not happen in this reality may be happening in other realities, you see. So you can have your counterpart in other dimensions. <laughs> now, of course, these are theories, and uh, there is no way of proving this um, auditorily or uh, validity of this, not yet established, but these are interesting theories. Time travel. There are some physicists who say that it is possible. Some say no, because uh, to, to travel in time, you have to go beyond the, the speed of light. And according to Einstein, you cannot go beyond the speed of light. The speed of light is 168,000 miles per second. That's the speed of light. And you cannot, trans uh, you cannot trespass that. You cannot pass that. And that's why Einstein cannot believe or can till his dying day, you know, he does not believe in quantum physics because the subatomic particles, subatomic particles can travel faster than light, <laughs> can penetrate barriers, can be in two places at the same time. This is, this, this, these are things that cannot be accepted by Einstein. But now, maybe Einstein is wrong. We will see. These are still um, controversial. And uh, maybe a few years more, we will really have definite answers to these questions. Very interesting questions. Mm -hmm. See, I've been Dominic. Dominic, sir, ano po ang churo ng or difference? Nang soul at astral body o kulay kung meron. <laughs> Ganda ng question ito. No? <laughs> Anong isura na? The astral body is the same as you. Because that's your ano, actual, okay. May pagka-difficult itong ano, no? uh, explanation, uh, technical. No? There is a difference between the etheric double and the astral body. There's the physical self and just beyond the physical, there is a counterpart called the, the etheric double. Para yun, yun ang kamukha natin. No? And beyond that, there is the astral body. So the astral body also looks like you. And in fact, in, in, interestingly, there are some people who could see, Uy, nakita kita. Just a few minutes ago, you went there, there you crossed, uh, you passed here. Then after a while, the real person passed the same, uh, with the same dress. What he suffers was the astral body of the etheric double. And the, the next one was the physical person. No? This has happened to many people. He said, kita kanina. Pero ganyan ka lang dumating. Pero nauna yung astral body uh, before the physical. So there is a distinction. But for us laymen, never mind the distinction, the astral body and the, and the etheric double, you can consider them to be one. How do they look like? They look like you. <laughs> okay. Gigi Sanghel Villanueva. Hi, sir. Someone doesn't like seeing entities. How do they close their third eye? Here is a question that's always been asked. How to close the third eye? In the first place, you cannot close the third eye because there's no third eye. You have only two eyes. 
We have no third. The, the, the thing that they call third eye is the spiritual eye. It's not the physical eye. We have in our faculty in the mind's eye, and that's the spiritual side. Actually, you cannot close it. You can manage it. You can solve um, or control it, but you cannot close it. It's part of your personality. It's part of your being. And there's nothing wrong with that. See? So how do you close it? I mean, you can manage it by knowing more about it, meditating, practicing, then you can control it. The third eye is also called technically clairvoyance. You know? And um, it's the same as, clair, uh, as the, third, the third eye. So we have a viewer from Vietnam, Simafe. Hi. Vietnam, Yeah, I understand you're sending me something at home. Masarap <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, miss your call, Kanina. Okay, thank you for watching, Mafe. All right, I know, baby, I have a Okay, Mervin. Hi, sir, Jim, I have a question. Gumagawa, gumagana ba? among the gemstones and crystal for luck and help protect you from danger. I have a black tourmaline, blue venturin, soda lad. All are legit. I have a lot of legit stores. I have a cleanse. It's true. If you believe in it, it's true. It is possible for objects to influence us. No, um, There are certain uh, crystals, for example, have certain vibrations. Electrical, electrical in nature because it provides electric energy and can be proven that there is such a thing as the electrical charge of crystals. Now, whether they can influence you for luck, for love, for money, depends on your belief. If you believe that this particular crystal, by holding it, cleansing it, and all that, can give you good luck, it will bring you good luck. If you believe it can protect you against spirit uh, possession or spirit molestation, it can protect you. In other words, it's your belief that, that is critical here. No? Uh, aside from the fact that it has vibrations, and also the collective, uh, the collective thoughts of people can influence no? the activity or effects of crystals. Crystals have been used for ages for thousands and thousands of years. This has been used in making uh, part of temples, etc., religious rituals, and many others. So they have certain influence, yes. But the influence will be depending on how you believe in it. If you believe in it strongly, it will work. So that's my answer. The Demi Rizal is asking, sir, do you think it's okay to teach other people some esoteric stuff? Because some concepts like law of attraction are gradually grasping mainstream mind. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, I think there's nothing wrong with uh, teaching people these uh, hidden laws of nature, like the law of attraction, the law of compensation. There are four of them that I I, I talk about. The law of it's, uh, There are four laws, hidden laws of nature. The law of affirmation, the law of attraction, the law of compensation, and the law of causality. Yan yung apat na yan. These are the four laws of nature governing our life. And if you know this, you will, you will understand what life is all about. Hmm? All right. Last two questions, David Oster. Jaime, is it safe to do past life regression on your own? On your own, no. I wouldn't um, advise it. Although I have a, a tape, not a tape, no, tape, no, no. CD will under the CD. So I have a voice recording. Uh, maybe it can be through a hard drive, they call it, or USB. 
or uh, past life regression, which is safe because it has certain safe uh, guidelines. But doing it on your own without the help of anybody uh, may not be advisable. So that's my answer. So we don't have too much time anymore. Uh, again, I'd like to thank people who, who watch this program. We try to keep this up on a weekly basis. We usually do it on a Monday, but possible for us to change it. And anyway, the is ongoing. It's it's permanent. I think it's you can access this on my Facebook. It's there all the time. And if you have any questions, suggestions, and topics to discuss next week, please let me know, and we shall consider them. So this is Jim again for inquiries. You may call. 0998-988-6292 or email Jaime Tilicauco at yahoo.com So good, 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 good,